so there is nothing in this world that gets the competition flowing in my family more than Scrabble does. We're super <laughs> serious about the game, and things get super stressed in the kitchen, and anyone who um, challenges each other is probably going to have a beef for about a week with each other. <laughs> so um, today I'm going to show you how to succeed at Scrabble. Um, how many of you know how to play Scrabble? Okay, so the majority of you. So I didn't want to teach you how to play Scrabble because most people already know. So I just want to show you how to succeed. So the first thing is do not try to cheat, especially because that will get you kicked out of my house. Um, so don't be coming around to your opponent's letters and like looking over and trying to see what they have and things like that. And it's also not a good idea to, because um, of course you have to take the letters out of this bag to kind of don't look and see which letters you're about to pick because it's supposed to be random and things like that. Um, and then, of course, there is the challenging rule. So basically, um, if Jensen spelled a word, say, fasted, which is a word, but Andreas said that it wasn't a word, then he could challenge her and basically say, hey, that's not a word. So they would look it up in the dictionary, which I don't have a dictionary right now. Most people just look it up online or whatever. Um, but if obviously that's a word, so she would be like, hey, you're wrong, and um, he would have to get skipped in the next round. If it was the other way around and it wasn't a word in the dictionary, then she would be skipped the next round. So that's how the challenging rule works. And you're only able to use words in the English dictionary unless there is a word that is from another language that is in the English dictionary, like promenade from French. So, um, uh, yeah, so we all get those difficult letters like um, X or Z or Q, things like that. Um, they're absolutely terrible. So I'm going to show you um, at least one word for each of those letters. So whenever you get those letters, just don't panic um, because there are tiny little words that are okay to use in Scrabble. Like when you have the letter Q, um, you can use... QI, which is actually a spiritual force found in the belief of Taoism and Chinese medicine, which is very interesting. So um, I could come over here and put it on an I, which is like right there. I'm just going to add that to you guys' this game. They're really serious about this right now. They're keeping score and everything. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, so if you get an X, um, you can always use X, which is, of course, a former boyfriend or girlfriend or former um, husband or wife. And um, let's see if I can find an E on here. Oh, look at that. I'm just adding words to your game. Yay. All right. So, and then here's a Z. Um, and apparently, that's a word you can use in Scrabble, which I did not know about. And apparently, it says, like, a pizza. And I'm like, why is Z? Uh, a separate word from pizza it doesn't make any sense but it's a part of Scrabble so um, there's no place I can put it on the board but that's that and also um, whenever you have all vowels which is extremely frustrating it's probably the hardest part more difficult than the letters that are with more points so um, I is one of the words that you can use with two vowels and that is basically a three-toed sloth so um, that's pretty cool. So, you know, there are lots and lots of words that you can use um, in the game of Scrabble. So I hope that you guys kind of learned something about Scrabble today. And thank you, Jensen and Andreas, for being my volunteers.